2,000 years after the departure of Jesus the Christ. The prophets are back to teach the real Jews, the 12 tribes of Israel, their true nationality. This is their campaign. The laws of God are the truth. Those are the things that we must keep in these last days. Because it's become a lawless society. We are a people that do not want to keep God's laws. Right. We rather keep every law of the land outside of God's laws. When it comes to God's laws, we start to rebel. We start to say, that doesn't mean that. When the law is the law, it's plain. Give me a law on the Bible. Give me Deuteronomy 22 and 5. Let's see a law out the Bible. Let's see if this is of our own interpretation. Or this is just plain as day. Read. Deuteronomy chapter 22 verse 5. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. For all that do so are an abomination unto the Lord thy God. Read it from the top. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. For all that do so are an abomination unto the Lord thy God. So the Bible says that men and women should not cross dress. Women shouldn't be wearing pants and men shouldn't be wearing skirts and dresses. That's what the Bible says. That's the law of God. That's one of the truths that you're going to rebel against. There's mannequins down the block with tights on to, uh, to allure you, to entice you to commit sin. To say, oh, the pants look sexy on that mannequin, it must look sexy on me too. Right. So that you entice a man into fornication, into spitting game. What's another law of God that deals with that type of fornication? Give me Exodus 22 and 16. God says his laws are everlasting and the and his laws are the truth. We got to keep the laws of God. For example, today is the Sabbath day. We're not supposed to buy and sell on the Sabbath according to God. Yet, we choose not to keep that commandment and choose to keep our sons and daughters cross-dressing when God says women shouldn't be wearing pants and men shouldn't be wearing skirts and dresses. Right. Now you got your daughter's ass hanging all over the streets for every brother to see. And you're okay with that? Right. Right. These are things flipped upside down in this society. These are things that we got to consider to be set free once again. Free from the mental and spiritual bondage that we're put under in this captivity. Read. Exodus chapter 22, verse 16. Brother and sister, can y'all can interpret this scripture for me real quick? Read. And if a man entice a maid that is not betrothed and lie with her, he shall surely endow her to be his wife. What's that mean, brother? Sister, what's that mean? I'm going to read it again for you, all right? Come on. Exodus chapter 22, verse 16. And if a man entice a maid that is not betrothed. What does it mean to be betrothed? Betrothed, betrothed. For example, if he asks you to marry, that's betrothal. You promise to him to be his wife. Understand that? So read it from the top. And if a man entice a maid, what does it mean to entice a maid, to entice a woman? If a man like yourself entice this woman, what does it mean to entice? But you said earlier, right? For like me, like. So if are you brother, sister, are you boyfriend, girlfriend? 
That's your wife. Okay, beautiful. It says if a man entice a mate, he shall read it from the top again. If a man entice a mate that is not betrothed and lie with her. Okay, so entice someone is to what? Deal with him sexually, right? Yeah. When he says that is not married or yeah. not promised to another man, yeah. and he lie with her, meaning he have sex with her, he shall what? He shall surely endow her to be his wife. God says that that man and the woman that lay together got to stay together. You understand that, right? Okay, okay. So go back to the uh, Psalms 119, 142. What we were talking about earlier is that. God's laws have to be kept in this in this land. So in this land, because it's our people, we don't keep God's commandments. We'll keep the constitutional laws. We'll keep the laws of New York City, the traffic laws, the ordinances, and so on and so forth. But when it comes to God's laws, we rebel against it. We got a problem with it. Understand? Read that again. Psalms 119 verse 142. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thy law is the truth. So the truth according to God is what? We just read it. Let's read it again for The righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thy law is the truth. What is the truth? The law. The law of God, right? So we just read a law that said if a man entice a maid that's not married or, or, or engaged, right? And he lied with her, he has sex with her, he has to make her his wife. Do you see that happening today? No. Of course not, right? All we have is boyfriends, girlfriends, jump offs, side chicks, side pieces. You know what I mean? This is a law in our society that creates single parent households, teenage pregnancies. Now, based off of that breaking of that commandment, right? Because God's laws are everlasting, right? So based on breaking that commandment alone, we now have what? Planned Parenthood in our communities. Now, you don't see Planned Parenthood in the suburbs where the white people are. You don't see it in Chinatown. You don't see it in Little Italy. You don't see it in, uh, I don't even know where, Kentucky or whatever. Right? You don't see it. You see it mainly in our communities. They have Planned Parenthood here to say, oh, you can plan for your parenting. But what does Planned Parenthood really promote? The abortion of your children. Right? More and more people abort their children um, and, and, and that's more of a, of a higher murder rate of our own people than uh, black on black crime, so to speak. Right. So when Black Lives Matter come to march about no justice, no peace, they never talk about the crimes that we do against ourselves. And if we kept that one law, we would not only stop fornication, not only would we stop STDs, spread it, we wouldn't need Planned Parenthood in our communities. Planned Parenthood originally uh, came from a eugenics movement, right? Which which one has the best genes, the best race? Let's kill off the blacks. Let's kill off the natives, the Hispanics. Why do you think they're solely in your community? Right? Now, this is a law of God that we should be keeping. Now, you say you're married to sister, right? All praise to the Most High. Give me that marriage. So, based on breaking this law, we have consequences, right? If, you, if you, there's a, a, a penalty or a judgment every time you break God's commandments. Understand that? And a lot of our brothers and sisters, they don't apply these things today. Like they don't think, why is this happening to me? You know what I mean? Why, why, why are, am, am I suffering this? Why is my, uh, my bill too high? Why, why is my mother sick? Why, why did I catch something because I dealt with this man? You get what I'm saying? Read this. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 4. Marriage is honorable in all. God says that marriage is honorable. So, we give you all praises because we don't see that often in this community. Brother and sister marrying each other. How old are you? You don't mind me asking. You're 26. How old are you, sis? You're 26. All praises. And you're told you are married legally. You got papers. Went down to the bureau. You signed your papers. You guys are legally married. Right? All praise to the most high. That's, that's, that's not seen today. Is what I'm trying to get at. But now you're a living example. You're a living example for anyone that's 25, 26 years old can say, oh, this is my wife. This is this is my, my the lady I'm going to spend the rest of my life with. The man I'm going to take care of the rest of my life. 
because I honor him as my husband, and God honors us because it said marriage is honorable in all. Come on. Marriage is honorable in all, and the bed undefiled. So what you do in your bedroom is between you two. God says that's cool. So long you got your marriage papers, you guys came together, parents approval, all praises. Most high says that's cool. But now, hold on, all praise, all praises. Thank the most high. Thank the most high. Come on. But whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. A whoremonger is a brother who a brother or sister who likes to sleep around with other partners. Right? Prior to and, and this is not to judge anyone at this moment. Prior to uh let's say myself being married, I used to jump around from sister to sister. Right? And that was the thing. That's what we used to do. Oh, yeah, I got another one. Or, or yeah, I slept with her. You go out at night. You go to the club, whatever it is. And you deal with this lady. And then you may deal with her once or twice after. And then you don't talk to her no more. Ah, right, she crazy. She bucked out. Now, the sister might be bugged out because she got so many spirits in her from all these different men that she slept with. Trying to find Mr. Wright. Then they go to the church thinking, oh, Mr. Wright got to be in church. Meanwhile, there's more adulterers in church. The pastors are sleeping with the women in church. Right. We're married women, right? But God says what? Read the bottom part again. But whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. He said whoremongers and adulterers, God will bring judgment upon. So fornication, give me 1 Corinthians 6. You know what I want? 6 and 9. He says fornicators, whoremongers, adulterers, there's a judgment for that. It's God's laws. It's in the Ten Commandments. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Yet that's not honored in society. Why is it that there's no legal law in society that says... If you committed adultery against your wife, you got to go to prison. There's no law against that, right, in, in society. But God's law says you can't do that. There's no penalty if you do that to her. You might get divorced, maybe. You know what I mean? She might put you in child support or whatever. If you guys decide to separate at that point. But there's no legal law that's going to prevent that. But God said there is a judgment for that. Read. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? What does it mean to be unrighteous? You know, sister, you know what it means to be unrighteous? Give me 1 John 5, 17. Hold that. Give me 1 John 5, 17. We'll, we'll, we'll let the Bible explain itself, okay? 1 John 5, 17. Book of 1 John, chapter 5, and verse 17. All unrighteousness is sin. God says all unrighteousness is sin. We uh, go back to 1 Corinthians 6 and 9. All right. God says marriage is honorable in all things. All right. Come on. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? So he says that those who commit sin are not going to inherit the kingdom of God. He's going to list some of those sins now, right? Outside of the Ten Commandments. Read. Be not deceived. God says, don't be deceived by what you see today in society that promote boyfriend and girlfriend, that promote uh, dating around, so on and so forth. He says, don't be deceived. Neither fornicators, uh -huh. nor idolaters. So he says, fornicators, those that like to sleep, brothers, uh, brother and sister, sister and brother, man and man, woman and woman, those are fornicators. He says, don't be deceived that those people who are not married and committing sin, read, and what? Nor effeminate. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Uh -huh. Be not deceived, neither fornicators, uh -huh. nor idolaters. Idolaters. Idolatry is rampant in our community. Rampant throughout the world. Did you guys celebrate Easter this past Sunday? Yes. You celebrated Easter. Easter is a pagan holiday. It's not of God. God says celebrate the Passover. The Feast of Unleavened Bread. But Easter is uh, is is honoring a god called Astaroth or Ishtar. Bring it out. It was right. never it was celebrated by the Romans, not by the Jews of that time, not by the Israelites. You understand that? That was never of Christ. Easter was never of Christ. During the Roman, uh, I went to church. During the yes, but they didn't teach you the right thing in church. They didn't teach you that Easter was wrong, according to God. You understand that? During the during the Roman. Um, Captivity while the Jews were there, right? During the Roman captivity, Baruch, turn in this one. There you go. During the Roman captivity, right? The Jews were under persecution under the Romans. That's why when Christ was born, Herod wanted to kill Christ, right? That's not freedom. You're in captivity. 
at the same time, there is a Roman policy to incorporate, like we have today with the Catholic Church, the Roman Catholic Church, incorporate all the pagan customs into the modern Christian era. So that's how we have uh, Easter and Christmas. These are all pagan holidays. These are things that now become laws of the land, but not laws of God. Christ said don't celebrate. God said don't celebrate Christmas before Christ is even born. Right? Read on. So this is going into idolatry. All right? So if you celebrate such customs, you're in the midst of idolatry. Did you know that birthdays is a form of idolatry? Because you put God, you put yourself, he says, my day. This is my day. That's against God's laws. Give me that in Job. I'll give you an example. On your birthday, some people say it's my birth week, my birthday week, my birth month, or it's my day. If it's my day, I'm going to celebrate and do my thing, live my life. Right? Let's see if this is, if there's an example in the Bible of this. Okay? Read that. Job chapter... Job chapter 1 and verse 4. Verse 3. Uh, no, give me verse 4. Yes. Verse 4. And his sons went and feasted in their house. Everyone his thing. So now this is Job, right? He said his sons, his children, feasted in their house. Everyone on his day. Then he went, his birthday. The day in which they were born. They were celebrating this, read. And to eat and to drink with them. And it was so. And his sons went and feasted in their houses. Everyone his day. And sent and called for three, their three sisters to eat and to drink with them. And it was so when the days of their feasting were gone about that Job sent and sanctified them and rose up early in the morning and offered burnt offerings according to the number of them all. So now, when we have a birthday party, what are we doing? We're inviting friends and family. We're feasting together. We're eating and drinking, having a good time, thinking everything is cool. Job rose up. He says, okay, they all celebrated their birthdays. Let me rise up early in the morning and offer burnt offerings. Right? Back in that time, they offered offering sacrifices for what? To make an atonement for sin, right? We all. But Job said, it may be that my sons have sinned. He said that what? That my sons have sinned uh -huh. and cursed God in their hearts. How did they curse God in their hearts? By celebrating their birthdays. Give me that in Exodus 20 and verse 3. These are things we got to understand according to God with his idolatry. Right? Yeah. Exodus 20 verse 3. Yeah. Thou shalt not have no other gods before me. So when you put another God before God like yourself, we make gods of ourselves nowadays. He said, don't put any other God before me. This is idolatry. Things we didn't know according to the scriptures. Now go back to 1 Corinthians 6 and 9. So it says fornicators are going to not inherit the kingdom of God. Right? Idolaters are not going to inherit the kingdom of God. Read on. No adulterers. Adulterers. Those of which you read about are going to get judged by the Lord. Right? No effeminate. Those that are effeminate. What does it mean to be effeminate as a man? To be girlish. Right? To be girlish, to have more feminine qualities or womanish qualities, right? Men that are very emotional, right? There's a, a whole generation nowadays, a new generation called uh, emos, right? They, 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 apparently they are deep into their emotions and you can't tell them nothing, right? Emotional men. Nowadays, our men are very emotional. You tell a man to pull up his pants, he gets emotional and wants to fight you. These are feminine men. Read. Nor abusers of themselves with mankind. Nor abusers with themselves with mankind. What does that mean? Abusers with themselves with mankind. Say that again. Guys that assault themselves, how? How do they assault themselves? What do you think, sister? Abusers of themselves with mankind. How do you abuse yourself with another man? How do you abuse yourself with another man? Right. Willingly. Giving yourself up to another Giving them up how? Giving yourself up how? Like, sexually. Sexually. Yeah. So what does God say? Homosexuality a sin. is a sin. Yeah. They're not going to inherit the kingdom of God. Yeah. You understand that? Although America 
says it's okay to be gay. It's okay to be lesbian. It's okay to be bisexual, transgender, confused, whatever it is, LGBT, so on and so forth. God says you're not going to inherit the kingdom of God. That's right. Understand that? Yeah. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. So the law says don't desire things that are not yours. For example, sister, I'm going to give you an example. Let's say you guys bought a house. Not a great house, not a grand house. A small house, starting out. Got two bedrooms, you can uh, start a family in there. Now you got your friend who buys a bigger house. They, they make it more money, they do a little better in life. They buy a bigger house, you guys go visit their house or the party, whatever, whatever. You say, wow, you see the kitchen? You see how they got the granite countertop and they got four bedrooms and so on and so forth. And now you want to tell him, look, I want a bigger house. She got a bigger house. Why can't we get a bigger house? They got a yard and all that. We ain't got no yard. We right next to somebody. That's coveting. That's desiring something that's not yours. Right? It goes it goes deep because coveting, when you when you covet something, you break damn near all the commandments of God. Like for example, if you covet money. A lot of our brothers and sisters, they covet after money. They desire money that becomes their God. Now they're breaking more than one commandment. You understand that? Go back. Nor drunkards. So being drunk, being high. God says that's a sin. You're not going to inherit the kingdom of God. Give me that in Titus chapter 2. Get out. Give me verse 6. Start at 6. Titus. Titus chapter 2 verse 6. Young men, likewise exhort to be sober-minded. So God says as a young man, you got to exhort. Strive hard to be sober-minded, to be clear-minded. Don't be high on weed, on uh, K2, all these other drugs out here. Don't be getting drunk, right? Don't be getting drunk, drinking in the, in the morning. Matter of fact, give me that in Isaiah 5. You know what I want? Isaiah 5 and 11, I believe. If not, it's 20. 5 11, right? 5 11, read. Isaiah chapter 5 and verse 11. Woe unto them that rise up early in the morning that they may follow strong drink. So he says, Woe unto them that rise early in the morning to follow strong drink. Right? So now let's break that down again. Read it again. Woe unto them. So woe, according to the Bible, means destruction. Meaning there's judgment coming to you. Woe unto you. Come on. That rise up early in the morning that they may follow strong drink. So what is this talking about an alcoholic? Right? Because if you rise up early to chase after alcohol, you're an alcoholic. You've been having this problem for some time. God says you're destroying yourself. Judgment is coming. Your liver's failing. You got darkness in your eyes. Yet you, you can't get out off the alcohol without proper medication, without proper rehab, rehabilitation and detox, right? Which has to become med uh, medical detox, right? And a lot of the times we have our detox facilities filled with our people in it, right? I don't really see anybody other in there but our people, they're many in our communities. But he says, woe unto them, go back to that, read it again. Woe unto them that rise up early in the morning, that they may follow strong drink, that continue until night, wine inflaming them. So he says that continue until the night comes and the wine inflames them. Because they get angry, they have all these different emotional spots throughout the day. They don't get enough drink, they mad. They begging for money then. Now, all of a sudden, what's starting to happen? They get angry. At nighttime, they get in fights. They wake up. They got lumps on their head. They don't know what happened. You know what I mean? God says the drunkards, those who want to get high on meth, weed, so on and so forth, that are not exhorting themselves to be sober-minded, you're not inheriting the kingdom of God. Go back to 1 Corinthians 6 and 9. This is how we have to understand the Bible. Precept upon precept. A little from the old, a little from the new. That's how we get understanding. Come on. No revelers. Revilers are, is a revilers or revilers? No revilers. To revile someone is to talk trash about that person. You understand? If you start talking trash about your neighbor, it means you got hatred in your heart for them. Right? Go to 1 John 3.15. Let's get some understanding on that. Because sometimes the thought alone 
creates sin in our body, in our in our system, in our mind, right, in our body. Come on. First John three fifteen. Whosoever hates his brother is a murderer. So Christ says, whoever hates his brother is a murderer. You understand that? If you got hatred towards me, and we can't reconcile that difference, Christ says that you have a spirit of a murder on you. You can't inherit the kingdom. Go back. So that's what a reviler is. Come on. Nor extortioners. Extortioners, those who uh, those who tend to cheat people out of money, those who tend to take advantage of people, right? Sometimes we get extortion. Um, for example, our credit cards extortion us all the time. Credit card companies. We use them as a need to buy something, right? Maybe to buy groceries or got it that week. We're a little short in the pocket. But now they charge them 29% interest. That's extortion. That's not right according to God. Come on. No extortioner shall inherit the kingdom of God. It says that they're not going to inherit the kingdom of God. Come on. And such were some of you. And that's where we were all once before. We were fornicating. We were in the midst of idolatry. We were coveting after money. You know, uh, getting high, so on and so forth. But we started to read the Bible and apply what's written. That's why, go back to John 8.32 now. Go back to John 8.32. This is why Christ says this. I want you to hear this. John chapter 8 and verse 32. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. So Christ says you shall know the truth. What was the truth that we read earlier? According to God, what was the truth? The laws. He said now you're going to know the laws. And the laws are going to set you free. Free from the mental bondage, the spiritual bondage that we're in. How, why is it that now we're so destroyed as a people? Do you know where you come from, who you are as a people? What's your nationality? What's your nationality, if you don't mind me asking? Well, I'm, I'm Jamaican and Chinese. You're Jamaican? Your father's Jamaican? Yeah. Okay. Give me number 118. You are what your father is. Don't matter really what your mother is, you are what your father is. Understand that? It matters when you, what your mother is when it comes to marriage. You got to marry your own people. All right, come on. Where are you from? Numbers chapter one. Black. black. African American. African -American. Yeah. Look on that sign. What does it say there by American black? Judah. Judah. That's your tribe according to the Bible. Out of 12 tribes of Israel, you come from the tribe of Judah. The West Indians, or what we would call the Caribbean Islands today, they come from the tribe of Benjamin. That's where your wife is from. Say that again. Levi the Haitians. She says she's Jamaican. West Indian blacks. Those from come from Barbados, Jamaica, Trinidad, Tobago, Saint Saint Martin. Those are your kind. All you got in that sign is your people. Oh, okay, okay, cool. Those are just your forefathers. Judah, Benjamin, Levi. Those are your forefathers. Your grandfathers, so to speak. Understand that? So now, why are we so destroyed as a people? We have to understand what happened to us. Something happened to us. An event in history, an event in time that made our people go from the top all the way to the bottom. Right? Let's understand what happened. Give me that Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 15. Start at verse 1. And we'll jump to 15. Verse 1. It, it shall come to pass. Uh, brother, pay attention. I know your, 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 your wife is on the phone. But I need you to understand it so you can teach her later. It says, it shall come to pass. This is Moses speaking to God's people, the Israelites, right? It says, it shall come to pass in the future. If thou shalt work it diligently... So heart it means to listen. To listen diligently, come on. Unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to do all his commandments which I command thee this day that the Lord thy God shall set thee on high upon all nations of the earth. And all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee. So he said, the Lord is going to, if you keep God's commandments, He's going to set you on high above all nations on the earth, and the Lord's going to bless you. And these blessings are going to come upon you and overtake you. Now, because God's love is conditional. 
It's not unconditional. He, he loves us. That's why he gave us his begotten son. But if we don't listen to God, this is what it says. Read verse 15 now. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments. So he said, if we do not listen to do and observe all of God's commandments, including what, his feast days, right, keeping the Sabbath day, keeping the dietary laws, right, his moral and civil laws, read. And his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. He said curses are going to come upon you and then overtake you, right? Read verse 45 and 46 together. Yes, sir. Verse 45. Moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee and shall pursue thee and overtake thee till thou be destroyed because thou hearkenest not unto the voice of the Lord thy God to keep his commandments and his statutes which he commanded thee. And they shall be upon thee for... He said, they, those curses shall be upon you. For a sign... And for a wonder, and upon thy seed forever. They're going to be upon you for a sign, a wonder, and on your children forever, for generations to come. Because we didn't want to keep his commandments. So some of these curses that came upon us, he said, they're going to be upon us when we become destroyed as a people. Yo, right? So now let's understand how we were destroyed as a people. Let's understand the instance in history that destroyed us as a people. That make you call yourself American black or color in a crayon box. I can't find black on the map, on the globe. African American, that was something that was coined in the 1980s by Jesse Jackson. So where you come from? People say, well, you come from Africa. We're in Africa. You do, technically, you do come from the continent of Africa. I'm going to show you the motherland in a minute. With joyfulness and with gladness of heart, for the abundance of all things, that's not having any other gods before me, keeping my law, statutes, and commandments. Read. Therefore, shalt thou serve thy enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee. So God says He's gonna send enemies against us if we broke His commandments. Come on. In hunger and in thirst. He said we're gonna serve these enemies that God is gonna send against us in hunger, in thirst, and what? And in nakedness. So for the food that you want to buy. The clothes on your back and the water you want to drink. You're going to serve your enemies for all these things. Come on. And in one of all things. And everything else that you want in life. So if you want to buy your wife a house, right? What you got to do? Where you got to go for that loan? You got to go to the bank. So you, so you want a house, you want a loan, whether it's for a car, whether it's for an education. You need that. You got to go to your enemy for it. God is saying, right? What else? You want to uh, you want education? We got to pay tens of thousands of dollars, if not hundreds of thousands, depending on what you want to do. You know what I mean? You want to get a trade? You still got to go to trade school. All these things we used to learn that in high school back in the day. Then they took out all those programs because our brothers was coming out of school with skills and crafts and trades. We had out. shop class, right? Right? We we had carpentry class. We was coming out getting jobs off the bat, making money. Right. Now they're like, no, 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 take that away. Right. Make sure they're going sure to pay us. Right, trade schools. You understand that? Right. Now you got to go to trade school. They no longer teach you to trade in high school. Now you got to go pay for that in trade school. Read from the top again. Therefore shalt thou serve thy enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee in hunger, and in thirst, and in nakedness, and in want of all things. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. So God says he, the enemy, is going to put a yoke of iron on the neck until you are destroyed. Mentally, spiritually, physically, emotionally. This is the destruction that the curses that came upon us. Let me get that uh, the sign for, for me. Oh, it's, right, the it's right there. It's right there, uh, Brooke. Yeah, right there, right there, right there. I'm going to show you a depiction of our fall, our downfall. He said, he shall put a, he shall put a yoke of iron upon your neck. Read from the bottom right there. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. Meaning your enemy was going to do this to you. 
put yokes of iron on your neck. See these yokes here? If you ran in the woods at night trying to be a runaway slave, you get caught up in the trees and the branches, you get snagged back. Some of them even got bells on them. I don't know if there are any signs, but some of them have bells on them. Where if you ran, it would bingo. Bing, ling, 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 ling. Oh shit, my property is, is getting, you know, running away. He said he, your enemy, is going to put yokes of iron on your neck until he hath destroyed it. When the yokes come off, when you start calling yourself African American. When you were destroyed as a people, when you no longer knew who you were. Understand that? That's, this is what, by our history in the Bible. Right. Right. God is saying that that's, that's a sign that's going to be upon you and your children forever. So that you will know in these last days who you are when you open this book. Hey, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. Don't be mad. Don't be mad. That's just history, brother. Come here, come here, come here, come here. Don't let that take you away from the seed, brother. Don't be sorry. Come here. Man. The truth hurts. Like I mentioned earlier. Go back to John 8, 32. Lord's word, brother. You get up. You, you uh, look us up online, brother. Look us up online. The truth hurts, but it's going to set you free. Right. And the most I plant a seed in that brother's mind. Read. John 8, 32. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. So knowing that you, your ancestors were made slaves in America, in Haiti, in Jamaica, in Barbados, in Santo Domingo. You were made slaves. And now you come as the children of slaves, thinking that you're set free now. But you're still in poverty, you're still poor, you still don't have nothing. Your resources on the islands are being eaten up by other nations. You guys gotta take these things into consideration. Give me that in Hosea. Actually, give me uh, Isaiah 1 and 3. Because our people do not consider why they're in the conditions they're in. Why are we still suffering in condi uh, uh, poverty and drugs and the mental destruction of our men and women? Why are things flipped upside down nowadays? Read. Isaiah 1 and 3. The ox knows its owner and the ass is master's crane. But Israel does not know. My people does not consider. God says that the Israelites, they don't know who they are in these last days. That our people won't consider. Officer, raise his antennas for me on that speaker. Thank you. Our peoples won't consider who they are in these last days and why these things are happening to them. Why are we walking around in garbage? There's garbage blowing all up in your nostrils right now. All in your eyeballs. And you're comfortable with that. You don't consider why. Why these things happen to us. These are the things, this is truth. The brother that was here earlier, he heard the truth and it hurt him so bad he had to leave. It cut him so deep to learn that his, his true nationality, his heritage, and he had to leave. What are we reading in the Bible? And you know what, the Bible cuts deep. It's a two-edged sword. Right. To bring you back to repentance. Right. But you blacks, you Hispanics, you so-called blacks and Hispanics, you must repent in these last days.
For years I've been walking around saying that I'm a black man I ain't saying that no more, it's how I'm broke, man This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ Please subscribe to our YouTube channels Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.